r slash dating over 40. Hot IRE 2206 says. How do you answer, why did you get a divorce? This is a question that comes up frequently on first dates and you're trying to connect emotionally with someone and be transparent and vulnerable but this is a difficult question to answer. It's especially difficult if you had an abusive marriage. You can't be vulnerable by glossing over it and just say it didn't work out or we weren't sweeted to each other. I'm all about the truth, but can you answer a question like this in a sound bite? And is it really appropriate to tell someone your husband hit you when you just met them 20 minutes ago? I also think it's important to not be bitter and disparage your ex even in a situation like this. It's pretty personal. How do you handle this? One purple unicorn says. I guess I'm the odd one out here. If they are going to ask on the first date, I'll answer. He was abusive and I wasn't going to live like that. We got a parenting order and generally speaking, we copper and without drama. So how old are your kids? Environmental Fun 8472 says. That's a great question for our third date. We'll tell ya when we get there. But for now, it's one of the best decision I've made. Keep it simple until you're ready. My social alt says. That's not really first date talk for me, but it's been settled for a while now. Can we split the potato skins? Kakopoli says. Hell no. I'm not splitting the potato skins. Imware19 says. Asking to split the potato skins. That seems plausible says. I struggle with this. I feel like it is important to respond in a way that shows good judgment not necessarily regarding the divorce, but good judgment regarding the level of disclosure on a first date. My own view is that oversharing is definitely bad judgment, but undersharing or trying to evade the question can also raise questions. So I try to respond in a way that is concise and doesn't invite additional questions. And if they do ask follow up, to respond in a light-hearted manner that I don't want to overshare on a first date. Be alive 888 says. Cause he was a cheater. I get taken aback when a few asked why did he cheat? That just tells me they believe there are situations when it's justified. Big Disaster 46 says. I straight up tell them he cheated. Kakopoli says. I think it's a great question, because it reveals, if a person has processed their relationship ending for me, we grew apart, and some long-seated emotional issues from both of us finally became too much of a burden. And, my ex is insane. Mostly that my ex is insane. Connect Dust 3896 says. After many years we realized, that we were no longer headed in the same direction or wanting the same things, so we divorced so each of us could pursue the life we wanted without resentment. Only after trust is built, will I disclose, that he had a mental health crisis, and refused treatments which is, why we were headed in very different directions. r slash dating over 40. Frosty underscore green 8522 says. Running hot and cold on old. Does anybody else run hot and cold when it comes to online dating? I've been doing this for 2 years now, and I seem to go through cycles of spending way too much time on the apps, and then one tiny thing will happen, and I'll get disgusted by it all, and delete all my accounts. I tend to be an all or nothing person in many aspects of my life, and am trying to take the middle path more. Instead of just deleting everything, and starting over again. I'd like to set some guardrails for how I interact with dating, and specifically dating apps. If anyone has done this successfully I'd love to know how you make it work. Thanks. TopNot78 says. Honestly, what worked for me was making sure my life outside and away from dating was as fulfilling as I wanted it to be. And once I got there the rest just fell into place. I no longer put as much emphasis on finding a partner, because I'm so busy in content otherwise. I make time for dating and swiping, when I have it, and I swipe right on few and far between profiles. 
it makes for a very quiet dating experience, but I don't mind. Probably not the answer you were looking for, but it's what worked for me. Big Disaster 46 says. I did. Then therapy really started helping, I started making friends in my new location, and my life is good. That's when I quit the apps for good. I tried a couple of times after all that, and realized I want more than anyone I've seen on the apps can offer. And I'm not really looking anyway. If it happens it happens, if it doesn't it doesn't. I also feel like the longer I'm off the apps, the better my life is. So, there is no hot and cold anymore. It's all about living my best life without being on the apps, and worrying about actively dating. Castlerark71 says. Just let the app float there. Turn off all notifications and just jump on when you feel like it. Odysseus underscore NM says. Most of the cats that you meet on the street speak of true love most of the time they are sitting and crying at home one of these days they know they gotta get going out of the door and into the street all alone. Thoughtcrafty6154 says. I'll let it sit, and just answered, like women send me toward the end of it, and then I matched with my current person. Yes she sent the first like. That's not as glamorous as it sounds. About 3 matches a month. I figured out that was about as much attention I wanted anyways. I really quit trying, and just started getting rid of people, that I didn't like our conversations, or was just blah. Let the sob sit there, and don't feel bad, if you unmatch in a couple of days, or you didn't like the way you meshed. In that aspect it is about quantity, because you're cutting out people, that barely made the cut faster. You may find someone you feel comfortable round and you both turn each other on. Chantamore says. Not a lot of experience. Be more selective and really read profiles. Check it 1-2 to access a week for some apps, that doesn't work because messages disappear. I heard some people unmatch, if they have no reply within 1-2 to two days so those will be missed. I turn them on pause a lot. I don't take them too serious. It's now time for an unpaid shoutout. This is Mrs. Junkman. She reads kids books for kids. Check it out in the description. r slash dating over 40 novel helicopter 1222 says fwb or is the courtship what is the protocol for dealing wfwb slash casual seeming situations as adults i would like to know if there's a possibility for a relationship but afraid to lose what we have zahart kut says how do you expect anyone to help you with this vague ass post a new beginning now says. The same as it would be, if it was a platonic friend, that is. A friend without benefits. It's common enough, that feelings could develop at some point on at least one person's end. You talk about it, you see how the other person feels, and if your friendship's foundation is solid, you can maintain what you have without anything getting weird, if one of you doesn't feel the same as the other. Kakopoli says. Nothing ruins a good FWB like catching feelings. Were you having an affair with them? Given the description. Stunning underscore thing 4208 says. If you're stuck in the frick zone is very probably you won't crawl out of it. But give it time. Sometimes things do warm up. I'd say 3 to 6 months to find out. My social alt says. If being open and honest about what you feel, and what you want, makes you lose what you have, it may not have been worth keeping. What makes you think, that he is courting you now? Triple the hamster says. It seems that in addition to the confounding piece of info newly presented in the thread, you're also embroiled in a huge and difficult custody situation with an abusive former partner. Are you sure you're in the right place at all for a relationship right now, when it appears you're actually in need of an escape hatch? Perhaps it's best at the moment, to keep in place what you're doing, and sort shit out first, or pull out entirely, so you can focus just on being emotionally slash mentally slash physically available for yourself and your kids. 
Ice will low big pickles says. Just go with the flow. Follow your partner's lead. R slash dating over 40. Iron Matinian says. Has anyone met these types of people on the old apps? After a match they are keen to move to WhatsApp pretty quickly, and then they start talking about investments into gold or crypto. Is this some sort of scam? Out of 6 matches I've had 4 like that. Mega Puff says. Yes it's a scam. Castle Rock 71 says. Yes indeed run. Dude out of Funks says. They leave the app, so they can sidestep any rules that the app has in place, and to stay up the longest while finding victims. Also, by moving to another app or form of communication you inevitably give up more personal information, such as a phone number, which they can then use to get more information about you to create a bond. I would recommend not leaving the app until you meet in person. This goes for both men and women. Undrunk Panda says. Total scam. They get you off the app, so you can't report them. If they mention anything about crypto, being an entrepreneur, or buying stocks on their profile, swipe left. Reluctant Donkey says. Yes. It's a scam. Yes, it's common, more for men than women, if would seem I've never gotten one. Triple the Hamster says. Scammers indeed. Herefint74 says. Out of 6 matches I've had 4 like that. Yeah, that sounds about right. It seems that authentic people are in the minority on the dating apps and the typical average profile is a bot slash fake slash inactive slash of troll slash scammer. The apps need to figure out how to get rid of all the spam, because it's killing their entire scene and eventually will run them out of business. Beachareach says. Scam. Samuel Westing says. I can tell so fast, if it's a scammer, their profile pics are unusually good looking guys in exotic locations, clearly European, and they always put their location as something, that is not an actual neighborhood in my area. If they message you the tone is just hell ways off. Pretty soon you'll be able to spot them easily too, 